Hey everybody, thanks for joining me here today. This is Nicole with Topaz and today we have our Quick Tip Thursday webinar on creating a bleach bypass effect. Okay, so creating a bleach bypass effect in Topaz Adjust is actually very simple. First let me tell you a little bit about the effect. It's really well known within film um, and still photography, but more well known in film Films like Saving Private Ryan, Minority Report, really took advantage of this process. What bleach bypassing is, is it's an effect that you achieve with the film when you actually skip the bleaching process while processing the film. And what it does is it leaves the silver in the film on the negative. And so that's going to leave you with an image that is pretty high contrasty, grainy, and definitely lower in saturation. So that's kind of what we're going to be creating here today. So let's jump on into Topaz Adjust. All right, let me show you a few before and afters. This is an effect that a lot of people enjoy. It creates really impactful, high, edgy images, but it doesn't work on all images. So it is up to you whether or not you want to put it on your images. I posted something on Facebook just a few minutes ago. Let's see if I can find it. I think it was this one. Yes, my before and after of our cowboy here, and a lot of people on Facebook didn't like the after. Well, some images it doesn't work on, and some it does. I personally do like the after effect. So there's a before and after for you. Here's a before and after. This is before and after. I really like it on this particular image. Here's before and after looks great in other types of images, not just portraits. Here's before and after. And you can even use it, I like to, with wedding images, take out the grain factor and just leave the actual toning. You can do that very easily in Topaz Adjust. Here's before and here's after. So let's first start off with this image. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this top guy, make a new background copy and go into Topaz Adjust. Just going to press reset all to get us back to our original image. So in our Topaz Adjust we have a film collection effect. So make sure that you go there first whenever you're in Adjust because we do have two presets, Bleach Bypass Cool and Bleach Bypass Warm. Here's Cool and warm. Now this particular preset is not going to look perfect on every image because the image it was created on is not necessarily the image that you're bringing in. So there's a few things within the actual adjustment panel that you should know about whenever trying to create this effect. I do like to start off with this preset because in the finishing touches the tone tab actually has all the tones in there that are going to really help this bleach bypass look. So I don't really have to worry about going into my tone tab and trying to figure all this out every time. I can just start off with a bleach bypass cool or warm. And so I'm going to start off with the warm for this image. Now again the look that we're trying to achieve is high contrast, low saturation, and grain. So we have that pretty much right now with this, but sometimes it's a little too unsaturated. So within the global adjustments, one of the places I continually go back to when trying to create this effect is the color. When you open up your color tab, you'll see that the saturation is way low, 0.45. One is the default, and the saturation boost is at 0.96, so also a little bit desaturated. So if you want to bring back some of the color within this effect, you can easily do that through the saturation slider and just take this up till you get the effect that you're trying to achieve with your image. So here's before, we're still quite desaturated, here's after, but we've brought back some of that original color, brought back some of his skin tone really quickly and easily. One of the other things you might want to keep an eye out for is the adaptive exposure adjustments. In the adaptive exposure tab, the adaptive exposure is set at 0.44 by default and the regions are set at 1. The reason the regions are at 1 is because that helps to get some major contrast within the setting. As you take your regions up, you start to 
get a little bit more local contrast. As you put that region towards the higher end of the scale, you'll start to see some areas open up, but you'll still see a lot of contrast within the image. So that's another area that you can work with to change the look around. You can also take your contrast slider down a little bit if it's a little too contrasty, but I think I like it for this particular image. And then the finishing touches is where I also want to show you. Right now our two presets are cool and warm preset by default. If you don't want it to be cool or warm, this warmth slider is where you can turn that off and on or change that warmth. So if I want to have a not really a cool image, not really a warm image, I can do that by just unchecking this warmth. Or if I want to keep it warm, I can take this up, down, it really is up to you. And the last thing that I want you to keep an eye out for within your Bleach Bypass effects is the grain. By default, the grain is not checked for this effect. So if you're wanting a more grainy image, which traditionally it will cause a bit the effect or the process does cause a little bit more grain in your image or the grain to be more apparent, then you can come in here and work with your grain. I'm just going to check it on because I kind of like the default of it. And it's as simple as that. So that is how quickly you can create these really high impact bleach bypass effects. And again, it might not be great for every single image, but it is amazing on some. So with that, I'm going to turn this over to you and we can look at a couple other examples. I'm going to take a look at some of the questions. Say OK and go back. I'll show you the before and after too while I'm pulling up the questions. Here's before and here's after. Linda says transparency. Linda, that's a good slider to know about as well. So let's take this one in. This image, I didn't want to get too strong of an effect or too grainy. I wanted to keep it still a really nice warm image, but I wanted to see what adding that bleach bypass effect would do. So what I did is I took this into adjust went to my bleach bypass warm, clicked on that, and it was just too strong for this particular image for me. Here's before and here's after. So if you don't want to go into all of these other adjustments that we just went over, you can easily come down to your finishing touches, go into your transparency tab, and bring back some of that original image just to kind of overlay the effect on your image just to kind of get you a, a mood set to the image as opposed to a really obvious effect. So now we have before and after and you can really play with this effect. I think it adds some great tones to the image too. Again here's before and after the transparency and the original image and the after image. Alberto says, do you think you can have this effect on pictures taken at night? Yes, definitely, Alberto. It actually has some really interesting effects on night. In night imagery, because the contrast is enhanced so much, you'll get some really dark areas and really enhanced contrast at night. And I think it just depends on the type of night image you have, whether or not it'll work for it. But it's definitely something to try. And the great thing about Topaz Adjust is it just has those two presets in there for you to just start off with and then quickly just move a couple sliders around to really make it work for your image. Craig says, is this good for landscapes and if so, what kind of landscape and what time of day? Craig, this is something that some would use on landscapes and some would never use this on landscapes. So again, it's just up to you and what you believe and the effect that you're trying to get, the look that you're trying to create. This is definitely a stylized look that has a lot of impact. So on landscape images, if you're wanting to keep the natural color of the landscape or really boost the color, this is not the effect that you're going to want to go for because you're taking out a lot of the color. And so I know a lot of landscapes you're trying to really enhance the color. So I would say this effect might be really good for more stark kind of landscapes, more rugged landscapes as opposed to beautiful fields or beautiful flowers or, you know, something that has a little bit of starkness to it and a little bit of grit to the landscape image. Uh, David says, is it possible also to add a layer mask and paint in or out the effect in various parts of the image? Well, David, you actually don't even need to make a layer because within Topaz Adjust, 
if we create this, let's just do this one. Let's say we wanted to, for some reason, take it out of the post over here on on the right. You can easily do that with your local adjustments brush out brush. Let's see here. Take my brush size down, my opacity I'll take up so you can really see that. That's great. Take my edge aware up. And I'll just do. So again, I'm painting out the effect very quickly. Here's before. Here's after. So I've brought back in some of that green color. So you can work with it that way or, like you said, within the layer masks. Andrea says, with the cowboy image, someone commented on Facebook they liked the effect in his eyes. Can you show how you can add it just to that area? Sure. So we have our cowboy image here, Topaz Labs. This is a good image to show where, at least for my taste, I don't particularly like the preset. But again, I'm just starting off here. So here I would come over to my global adjustments and definitely bring back some of his color. And go into my adaptive saturation and get those region sliders working out so I can really get his eyes and the contrast um, within the image more localized as opposed to global. And then I might come into my color and work with my color a little bit more too. Okay, so once you get to a point that you like and you want to necessarily, you want to take it out of everything else but leave it in his eyes, you can use the same brush out feature. Right now we don't have a brush in, so the brush out would be the way that you could do that. You could also use a layer mask within Photoshop, but it's quite easy within the local adjustments tab to be able to do this. I'm going to take my edge aware down and my brush size up and get the majority of the effect taken away pretty quickly out of his face and I'm just or out of everything but his eyes and then once I have it taken out of the majority of the image I can focus in on his eyes by taking my edge aware up and brushing out around his eyes but just being sure not to put the crosshairs on his eyes. So you can see my brush is quite large actually and going over everything but his eyes. You can also do it another way, which actually seems a little bit easier at this point as I'm going <laughs> through all of this, is to completely brush it out of his eyes and then brush it into his eyes with um, the edge aware. So to come back and take that brush and just put the crosshairs right on his eyes in the blue and you're going to be able to just bring back the eyes itself very easily. You can bring back the white of his eyes too if you'd like. I don't particularly like that though. I like just to bring back the interior of the iris. There we go. So here's before. Here's after for the local adjustments. Looks kind of odd on this one, but here's before and here's after. Let me show you that a little bit closer. Before and after. Uh, Kimberly asks, what is the difference between saturation and saturation boost? Saturation is going to increase the overall saturation, Kimberly, of your entire image. Saturation boost is kind of the extra slider. And what it does is it takes the very unsaturated colors and boosts those colors. So it gives those kind of weaker colors a little more extra boost with that saturation boost slider. I can show you that within this image here because this is a great, has a lot of saturated and unsaturated colors. Reset all. So if we just go into our colors and we take our saturation up, you'll see those more stronger colors start to come up with that saturation slider. And then the saturation boost, you'll start to see all of these other colors that are a little bit weaker come up in color as well. Looks like those are all the questions that are coming through today. Thanks so much for joining me, and I hope you can join us again. Bye-bye.